Well, here we are with our 1947 Bantam trailer, complete with rooftop tent. We've uh, done a couple videos on this, but wanted to take a minute or two here in the garage, uh, which is a war zone, my apologies, uh, to show you exactly how um, the tent all goes together and how it flips up uh, and operates on the trailer. So the nice thing is you can do this while it's hitched up to the vehicle, you can leave it in place, and then uh, open the tent. So. You'll notice with the trailer we've got uh, matching wheels to our GX460 uh, and uh, matching color and then we did bed liner inside of it uh, to make it all kind of cohesive and uh, it's a quick walk around here. The tent itself is a Smitty built Overlander 2. Uh, we've had really good luck with it and been very happy with it. We've owned it three or four years now and we'll just show you how to open it. Uh, the one issue I've had is that little piece is loose right there, that flap, but um, here's the zipper. So it just goes the whole way around to remove this black vinyl cover on top. And it tends to be pretty easy to work with. Now I'll mention that one of the struggles uh, with this is there's four of these straps. Um, there's two here on top and two underneath that have a lot of Velcro associated with them. And yeah, it's, you know, let me move the trailer around a little, get it squared up just right. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a struggle sometimes to get these loose, um, especially if they get wet and dry and wet and dry. and um, that's kind of been the case uh, here because we washed the uh, uh, the trailer uh, since then, and uh, we'll put a link to the wash video uh, uh, here. But uh, it, it's sometimes a struggle a little bit to, to get things through that D-ring. You see, finally, it'll like almost pop loose and uh, and work. But in the meantime, you can enjoy our beautiful uh, Seiko uh, 62 MAS uh, diver reissue on a uh, Uncle Seiko strap, looking good or bracelet, looking good there. Uh, it's a great watch, and uh, I know car people are always watch people, so I have to mention it. Um, just uh, getting these loose, these are kind of the primary straps that, that hold the cover on, uh, make sure that it stays uh, all covered up and uh, all in one piece while you're driving down the road and, and is, is very important. So I always make sure these are really tight and uh, in turn uh, they're sometimes a little bit of a struggle to, to get off altogether. So uh, that said, we'll get this big vinyl cover off, just throw those over the, right over the top there and um, there we go, coming around with the zipper. And the vinyl cover is pretty heavy duty. Um, I'd say it itself, it probably weighs like seven or eight pounds um, at least, uh, just as part of the, the tent. So you have to run with it. There's no way to transport the tent. Um, you can remove it entirely from the tent. Uh, there's another third or second zipper that goes across that fourth side. Um, but uh, I tend to, to not remove that. If you've got a vehicle you're worried about maybe scratching the paint and this uh, cover gets dusty and dirty and it's gonna hang against the side of your vehicle, maybe flap in the wind, uh, that would be worth doing. But here we are, these are probably, uh, these two straps right here, the one right in front of us and the one directly on the other side are probably the two hardest ones to undo uh, on the whole trailer and around the whole tent. And the big part, reason for that is that they, uh, they tend to, one, be thicker uh, with the D-rings and two, uh, the memory foam mattresses that are inside of this are under compression. So there's always a little bit of pressure pushing up on that and that makes it just a little bit of a struggle. Sometimes it takes me an extra minute or so to, to do all this. All in, I would say that with a helper, uh, you could probably handle doing this and putting the tent up uh, if you've got some practice with and experience with it. I could say you could have, uh, with, with one other person, you could, you could easily do it in five to seven minutes. Uh, it's very quick with one person. Tends to be a little bit more walking around, running around, um, and that's just kind of the nature of the game as we go to our other straps over here. I don't use the, the full D-rings there just because it doesn't seem to do a lot. The inners don't really hold anything. It's this outer uh, edge of the clamshell. You can kind of see there's some, you know, it's under pressure there, and it's just not always easy to come on. Um, but uh, I'm sure that, that this is also twice as hard because I'm on, I'm on video right now, and that's normally how that works. But we'll, uh, we'll struggle with this here for, for a minute. I think this is actually probably the hardest part of putting the tent up um, all together. Uh, and I can easily spend a minute or two uh, on each one of these straps trying to, trying to work, it, work it loose. So we'll you know, talk about other cool stuff. I have the S2000 here in the background and the lift on its Science Speed Advance. Absolutely love the look. Uh, it looks so good sitting up there on top of the lift. It's very satisfying. Uh, it's a little bit of an aside. But that's what I'm thinking about while I'm just trying to work this thing uh, thing loose standing there. Is, uh, man, we'll get all the cool stuff on the walls and uh, all of the work and all the trash that I need to uh, clean up and pick up and organize and projects that are underway in the garage, which I think we're all guilty of. I've spent probably, oh geez, at least at least 30 or 40 nights in this roof tent. There we go. 
Um, and uh, I think it's really paid for itself. So now you can see the clamshell's loose. We're just gonna grab the ladder, pull it towards us, and just flip it right up. Just push down, use your body weight, push down. It'll come right over the top, almost right back at you. Click, 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 and that's it. So the tent's now essentially together. Uh, the rain fly is what's loose on top, and if you, you don't run the rain fly, uh, you're pretty much done, but I, I always run the rain fly. Um, there's really no downside to doing so, um, and it, it stores really nicely with the tent. You can adjust the ladder. These uh, legs lock at different heights. Um, you can see the little push bars across to, to, to release them. And um, you know, right there, those two, two uh, kind of sliders are what sets that. And you can set you know, how you sort of want it to look and, and how it's going to be comfortable for you to get in and out depending on the height of the vehicle it's on. Here's our shoe bag right here. And that shoe bag allows you to slot your shoes in. Uh, when you climb up, you sit right there, take your shoes off and throw them in the bag. And that way you don't get uh, you know, junk all over the inside of your tent. There's our rain fly connections. Uh, and then these uh, are connected to the actual tent itself. Um, and then this is our access to, there's latches on each side to lock the tent into position to keep the, the clamshell from potentially folding back up. Or perhaps if your friends are jerks in the middle of the night, folding you back up in the tent, uh, always a risk you run in. But uh, you can also run a wire up inside there. Say you're at a campsite with electricity or running a generator, you can run you know, an extension cord up through that little space on the either side. There's the back. The cover's totally down on the back. Um, same thing uh, on this side, but we'll back up and uh, let you get a good look at the tent here. So here we are as we move inside the tent, um, and I tipped the rain fly up, but these are the, the sort of tension rods that keep the rain fly in place. And, um, this is one of those things, if you've got a helper, it always makes it faster just because you have to do half as many of them and you'll have a hand free. But um, they go and they slot. You can see there's a little spot right there. There's, there's eight of those around the tent and you just push, push some tension on that. And it, it essentially, oh, come on. And uh, you get a little wiggle and there it goes right there. It'll stick right in there. Perfect. Um, so I usually do a couple of these at a time, work my way around the tent. We've uh, had it in some pretty gusty conditions. The one thing I would recommend, particularly if you're um, uh, storing this tent up on top of your car or you're, you're staying up on top of your vehicle or a taller SUV, you do not want to be in this tent in a thunderstorm. That's probably true of most, uh, most tents. If possible, you should retreat to your vehicle um, during a thunderstorm uh, just to be cognizant of the, the risk because this is a metal frame inside of there. There's three big aluminum tubes uh, inside that sort of support the structure of the tent itself. That said, uh, it survived some pretty nasty rainstorms um, and have certainly uh, not gotten a, a drop wet in it, and that's always super fun. Costing one of these tents is in the old thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. They've gotten a little bit pricey over the last few years. I think we paid about eleven hundred uh, at the time we, we paid for it, and you know my mentality was uh, if if you stay in it ten nights, you know that's a hundred dollar a night ho hotel room. You basically paid for the tent, uh, you know, and that that uh, math sort of has shaken out and then some for us. We uh, we loan this tent out to friends. We loan it um, uh, out to family, and they'll take it on trips. Uh, Brother-in-law just had it up north dirt biking uh, with with his dirt bike in the bed of his truck, and then this behind him to stay in. Uh, he had probably one of the cooler setups at uh, at their camp. So. Just working our way around here, you can actually thread this, if you want to just extra security, you can thread that uh, through the grommet right there on the bottom of the cover. And all of the openings in this tent, whether it's the two skylights, uh, the doors on the front and the or the back, uh, which this is one of the doors, and then the side vents that are on each side, so there's six openings. Um, all of them have a cover that is the tent material itself, the gray, dark gray material, and then underneath that, another set of zippers and a uh, screen, a zippered screen on each of them. So you can really fully open the tent up, especially if you take the rain fly out. We've done it when it's been, you know, 70, 80 degrees at night and it starts getting really hot and it's not going to rain. We'll pull the rain fly off, open everything up, um, and then it's really just like a big open air screen house uh, up there. And that's the the side vent windows right there, those are pretty substantial. I have, oh, this thing kind of slides. This is one of the hardest ones to do because it, um, it tends to be under the most tension from the other uh, other tension rods. But 
Uh, I tend to, f uh, I've actually even managed to go through and um, put a space heater in here uh, at night to warm it up um, before uh, when we've had a campsite with electrical, uh, just to, to get it warm before going to bed and uh, make sure you're not gonna, gonna freeze uh, overnight. So there we all uh, are uh, done with our tension rods. Those are all sprung together. That, um, that really uh, gives you that uh, structural stability and safety um, with the rain fly, make sure it stays on there even the windiest of conditions. So uh, you can see this tent also has two skylights. There's one of them right there on top, and there's kind of a big view of the tent all set up. That's what it looks like um, when you're set up at your campsite. Uh, I've actually even had the chance, there's our GX, which we tow it with, we're color matched with. I've actually had the chance to even hide under that four foot by four foot clamshell when it's pouring rain um, and it's sitting in a chair so sometimes I'll even set my camp chairs up under under that overhang um, you can get that surround uh, in some cases for those as well we'll do a quick uh, walkthrough of the the tent itself there's the the bag the tension rods came in you'll notice we've got a memory foam mattress here that's about a three inch two and a half three inch memory foam mattress I put another one and a half inch topper on top of that just a full bed topper the interior dimensions are 54 by 96, uh, which 54 is about the width of a full bed. I've got my trusty light here. And then those red poles uh, we're grabbing onto there, those uh, help you get up and into the tent, uh, especially if it's way up in the air. That's kind of nice to have that safety to grab onto. And then uh, these are sort of a tensioning item uh, for the fabric. So when you push the tent down, um, these are in place to pull the fabric in to sort of get everything to collapse in on itself. Um, you just leave them loose, uh, you can take them out while you're, while you're running around up there and hanging out up there. Uh, we've also got, there's our skylight there, we've got the screen on the one side, the uh, exterior fabric of the tent on the other, and that just rolls up and, and has a, a little bit of a hanger, uh, there's two on each, each item, each uh, opening. Across the back here, uh, right up here on top, this is a uh, LED light bar which plugs into a uh, handy USB right there. Uh, that really lights the tent up well at night. Um, I have a power pack, a battery power pack I use for that. And then uh, right here, uh, this is your view inside the tent at night. This is about roughly where, where I would be laying when I'm sleeping. Uh, Size-wise, I'm a little over six feet tall. So you can see I've still got a foot or two of leg room at the bottom and then also have uh, probably another foot above my head there for, for pillow room and everything else. So very comfortable. I could easily see kind of a normal normal couple up here with like a dog or even even a small child, um, you know, like a, a toddler or infant. Uh, they do make a larger version of this tent, uh, which is much more substantial. It's actually the, about the width of a queen, queen bed. Um, it's about another six or eight inches wider. So there's about where my feet would be if I was sleeping comfortably. And you can see I've got a solid foot or so foot and a half under my feet there to, to store stuff. We'll slide on out of the tent. Uh, normally I'd go down backwards if I was up on top of the truck, uh, but uh, here's where I'd stop, take my shoes on and off, put those guys in there if I was climbing in or out. And uh, that is a quick summary of what it's like to be up in your own private tree fort, uh, which is super fun. Again, those are those straps to come down backwards and uh, it's a really nice space. It's much more comfortable than a ground tent. It feels a lot more secure, and you get the added bonus of being on the suspension uh, of the trailer. So you get the natural cushioning of the memory foam you're sleeping on, and then the suspension of the trailer itself. Rather than uh, walk through this process again, I'm just gonna show you the, uh, the time lapse here of, of putting it all back together. Uh, this is about a, a 30 second long time lapse, which would translate out into about a five to six minute, about a six minute process uh, seven minute process for actually putting it away. I find it to be a little bit quicker to tear down than to put up, uh, but that's that's really it right there. We wanted to uh, uh, say thank you for having all of you uh, tune in tonight and uh, see our 1947 Bantam uh, with our super cool roof tent on it. We adore this thing. Uh, all you gotta do is right there, hitch it up and uh, plug it in right there to the GX and uh, we're uh, looking forward to traveling uh, even more with this thing. It's, it's been just a, a privilege to own and a super fun project, uh, which is just really, really cool. We get a lot of looks and a lot of love for it. And uh, the reality is if you're into cars and you're a big car person, this is the sort of thing that you have and you love and you love to tinker with. So happy to answer any questions in the chat or in the comments. Uh, we really appreciate all of you liking and subscribing. Uh, this has been our uh, trusty steed on many uh, trips to racetracks and camping trips. 
and uh, we hope uh, you guys can enjoy it as much as we have uh, just seen a little bit about it.